Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to another one of my bread videos. In this video I'll show you how to make this stunning authentic rustic cottage loaf. It has a delicious light soft crumb and texture on the inside and a great crispy crust on the outside. And it's really easy and relatively quick to make. And here's a list of the simple ingredients needed to make this warm and comforting Old English classic. Or, as my grandson Michael calls it, UFO bread. <laughs> you can kind of see where he's coming from though. OK, I'll start the recipe by making sure the yeast is alive and kicking. For this loaf you'll need 2 level teaspoons or 7 grams of instant or active dried yeast. But for a change and by request I'm going to use fresh yeast today. But you can use either dried or fresh. If you use fresh you'll need 20 grams so I'm going to weigh that off on my digital scales. And 20 grams is 3 quarters of an ounce. And the water for this recipe is 260 grams, that's 9 ounces. The temperature of the water should be around 40 degrees Celsius, that's 104 Fahrenheit. OK, to test the yeast, first dissolve 1 teaspoon, that's 6 grams of sugar, in the water. Then whether you're using fresh or dried, add the yeast to the jug and mix it well. Then set it aside for a few minutes just to make sure the yeast is alive and well. It's always best to test your yeast before you start the recipe. And while the yeast is proving, I can weigh off the rest of the ingredients. And the first one is 500 grams, that's 18 ounces of strong white bread flour. 8 grams, that's 1 teaspoon of ordinary table salt. And finally, 20 grams, that's 1.5 tablespoons of vegetable oil or softened butter. OK, if you've got a stand mixer, then add all of the ingredients to the mixer bowl and mix using the dough hook for 8 minutes. But as usual, I'll be demonstrating by hand. Mainly for those who don't have a machine, or if you simply want to have a go at kneading the dough yourself. Right, here we go. Add the flour to a bowl, followed by the salt, and give it a good mix using a whisk. Now I'll add the sugar and yeast mixture. And as you can see, it's nice and frothy, meaning it's good to go. It doesn't always turn frothy mind, but if you see little bubbles popping on the surface just like those on screen, then that's okay too, the yeast's fine. If you have no activity at all, then you have a dead batch of yeast and you need to replace it. But it's better that you find out now rather than an hour's time when your dough hasn't risen. And now I'll add the last of the six ingredients, which is the oil. Then I'll roughly bring it all together using my trusty wooden spoon handle before tipping it all out onto the bench. Once the sides have been scraped clean, I'll add half a teaspoon of vegetable oil and coat the bowl with it. This is just so the dough releases easier after the first rise. OK, I'll quickly bring this all together into a ball of dough. This takes about two minutes in real time. Right, once it's all together, I'll set the timer for 10 minutes. That's how long it needs to be kneaded for. I'll show a few different angles of my kneading technique and a bit of slow motion so you can see what's happening. But I'll go into much more detail in my sandwich bread video on kneading tips and techniques. 
I'll leave a link in the description box below. And that's the kneading out of the way. And that's a nice little upper body workout for us more mature home bakers. Now I'll get it into the oil bowl, cover it with my shower cap and set the timer for one hour. And if you've used a machine to do yours, you're at the same point as I am now. So get yourself a bowl and cover it the same as mine. Right, I'm off for a lie down now after all that exercise. And I'll see you in an hour. My goodness, that was quick. I'll be baking the loaf on this 12 inch or 30 centimetre square baking tray and I'm greasing the tin with a thin coat of lard but you can use butter, oil or vegetable shortening. Ok the time's up and as you can see the dough has well risen so I get it out of the bowl and degas it. This is also known as knocking the dough back. And because of the oil I applied earlier, notice how easy the dough comes out of the bowl. Now, if your initial measurements were correct, your dough should weigh 800 grams, that's 28 ounces. So I need to cut off approximately a quarter of that to form the top tier of the loaf, which is 200 grams or 7 ounces. And as you can see, that's 212 grams or 7.5 ounces, but that's close enough. A lot of recipes will call for a third of the total weight of the dough for the top tier. But I find that's a bit too heavy for the bottom tier to hold up, so I recommend just using a quarter. Now you need to form both pieces into dough balls, as shown in the video. Now place the large piece right in the centre of the baking tray and gently flatten it down a little. Then carefully line up the small one on top as close to the centre as possible. Now take a wooden spoon and dip the handle in some flour and push it straight down through the middle of both pieces all the way to the bottom. Then carefully twist and lift it out. This ties both pieces together so they should rise evenly as one. Now cover the dough with a lightweight dry towel. Now my kitchen's on the chilly side this morning, about 21 Celsius, that's around 70 Fahrenheit. So I'm going to set my timer for 60 minutes, but it really could take anywhere between 30 minutes and 1 hour, depending on the temperature of your kitchen. So keep an eye on it. When there's only 10 minutes left on the timer, preheat your oven to 200 degrees Celsius, that's 392 Fahrenheit or gas mark 6. I'm setting mine to 180 Celsius as my oven's fan assisted and it runs about 20 degrees hotter than indicated on the dial. And to make the cottage loaf nice and crispy, you'll need a pan of hot water on the bottom shelf of the oven. And to make the loaf even crispier, you'll also need a spray bottle with some water in. Ok, mine took the whole 60 minutes to rise, but as you can see, it looks very good and in proportion. All I need to do now is to flour and score it. Right, I'll start by giving the dough a good dusting of flour. To slash or score the loaf, I'll be using one of my French baker's tools called a lamb or a lame. I bought this one with a fixed blade. 
or I can use this homemade one. All it is is a razor blade with a wooden skewer through and a little piece of packing on the back. But as it's new, I think I'll just use this green one. I'll start by scoring the top tier, followed by a few slashes around the bottom one. And that's the scoring done. Now to get it carefully into the preheated oven. I'll give the inside a couple of squirts with water. This will make the bread a bit extra crispy. Now get the door shut and set the timer for 30 minutes. But I'll be turning the loaf halfway through for even cooking. And I'll just give it another quick squirt with water before shutting the door again for the final 15 minutes. And there it is in all its glory, one beautiful cottage loaf. Right, I'll get it onto a wire rack and let it cool for 30 minutes. And once it's cool, I'll cut one or two slices off and then give it a bit of a taste test using some of my homemade butter. And one thing I haven't mentioned yet is the aroma in my house from freshly baked bread is absolutely wonderful. Okay, it's 30 minutes later and the cottage loaf is still a little on the warm side, but I can't wait any longer. As you can hear, it has a fantastic light crispy crust. That's due to the water pan in the oven and the spray bottle. And the texture inside is a wonderfully light, close, soft crumb. Time to try some with some of my homemade slightly salted butter. If you want to know how I make this butter, I'll leave a link in the description box below. The first thing to notice is how crispy it is and that warm soft texture of the inside is quite delightful. I really hope you give this one a go. You don't need a loaf pan or a fancy mixer to knock out a fantastic rustic loaf of bread like this. And of course it gets the usual thumbs up. Well thank you again for watching, please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in the kitchen and bye for now. Okay, I'll admit it, it does look a little like a flying saucer.